We get a lot of questions about planning a Universal Orlando vacation, and we do our best to answer them all, but some of these questions come up way more frequently than others. So what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna answer 10 Universal questions that we get every single day. Question one is how early can you check into the hotels? So check-in is officially at 4 p.m., yeah. but you can go ahead and go through that check-in process as early as seven in the morning. And the great thing is that when you go through that check-in process, they go ahead and give you your room key, regardless of if your hotel room is ready or not. So a lot of people that ask this question are staying at one of the three premier hotels where it comes with Express Pass, and your room key actually does doubles as your express pass. So after you go through that check-in process, you can go ahead and hit the parks. And then later in the day when your room is actually ready, they'll send you a text message and let you know what your room number is. When Anna mentioned the text message, she's talking about the text messaging service that they offer when you check in. Uh, you can like correspond with them and ask questions or whatever you need that way. And it's one of the reasons that we highly suggest it because it just makes everything way easier. And also once you get that room number, you don't have to go through the check-in process again right. or like wait in a huge line if one has formed. You can just go to the hotel and walk up to your room. Our second question kind of piggybacks off of the first one, and that's what do you do with your luggage on the days that you check in and check out? This is actually like a great question because it's one of those things that we had to learn as we went, like we were doing different things, like checking in later or whatever, just so the room would be ready. And you don't have to waste any of that time. All of the onsite hotels have a luggage service desk where you can just drop off your luggage and they take care of it for you. You can drop it off, head to the parks, have a day of fun. And then when you're ready to come back to the hotel, you just pick it up. And another great thing to mention about this is you can do this both on the day that you check in right. and the day that you check out. And we always use it on our checkout day because we book those late flights. Um, and then we have an extra day in the park and then we just go back to the hotel, even though we're already checked out, you pick up your luggage and take an Uber from there to the airport. Question number three is, do you miss out on some of the cues when you use Express Pass? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Most of the Express lines either route you through an entirely separate entrance yeah. or they take you through an abbreviated part of the line. This is especially true with some of the highly themed rides like the Harry Potter ones. For example, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, that's the ride inside Hogwarts Castle, if you didn't know that. Um, if you take that Express Pass, you aren't even gonna go through like the greenhouse yeah. and there are a couple other things that you miss. Mm -hmm. So our recommendation is for rides that you're a fan of whatever they're based off of. So if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, maybe you really love Spider-Man or Transformers, we would suggest going through that standby line at least once so you get a chance to see everything that it has to offer. There are a couple of cues that are just better than the rides themselves. So this is one of those things that we definitely recommend, especially for certain attractions. Mm -hmm. um, and also something else we wanted to mention is if you have that express pass, it kind of feels bad to go through a standby line yeah. uh, because those things are so precious. Like you don't want to waste them. So what we recommend doing is waiting for those wait times to drop. I know that seems obvious, but some people are just like, oh, they said to do this one. So <laughs> they'll just go jump in uh, like the forbidden journey line when it's 90 minutes. It'll drop at some point during the day, even when it's extremely busy in the parks. So just watch for that wait time. And when it's a short enough wait time that you feel comfortable getting in line, that's when we would suggest doing it. The next question is whether or not you can bring a freestyle cup back and reactivate it. So first of all, if you don't know what a freestyle cup is, we do have a video where we cover everything about them. So we'll leave a link to that in We're the description down below. But the short answer is yes. We have people that ask us this question on like, inside of a single trip where they didn't realize that like, if you bought it on Monday, you could bring it back on Tuesday yeah. and pay less money to reactivate it. And so like in a single trip, they bought like four they freestyle cups. Army of freestyle cups. <laughs> and then we also get asked this on a long term where people, maybe they visited in September and then they're coming back like in June and they wanna know if they can bring their older freestyle cup back and reactivate it. And the answer to that is also yes. Yeah. We've gotten a few comments here or there that are like, hey, we brought back this cup that we bought a long time ago and it can't be reactivated. Um, and we've just never had that experience. If you have, let us know in the comments, but we've got some cups that are like four or five years old at this point that 
we still are able to activate. So we're just not sure if there's like a cutoff or anything like that. I mean, obviously if you have a cut from like 1999 when the freestyle machines didn't even exist, you're probably gonna have a few issues. Also something that we've learned like fairly recently is that you can activate the cups for multiple days at a time. So if you know you're gonna be there for five or six days, when you first activate that cup, you can just go ahead and tell them to load it up for your entire vacation. Before we move on to the next question, if you're enjoying this video and you would like to see more content like this, if you would go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Please, please. Those likes really help this video and our channel overall. Also, if this is something that you would like to see more of and you have a specific question that you would like answered, go ahead and leave that in a comment down below. Question five, when is the best time to go? That's a loaded question uh, because it really depends on what you want to get out of the trip. I mean, our answer would be any time because we just love going to the parks, uh -huh. but most people who ask this question, they're wanting to know about crowds or wait times. And what we can say about crowds and wait times is they follow like work schedules and kids vacations, specifically kids out of school so like summer's really busy spring break's really busy any of the breaks or major holidays they tend to be really busy so if you're looking for low wait times just avoid those in general Something else to consider when you're trying to figure out when to plan your vacation is seasonal events. Universal does have three seasonal events every year, and that's gonna be Halloween Horror Nights, which happens in September and October. They have the holidays at Universal, which is part of November and December. And then they also have Mardi Gras, which is February-ish to April-ish. Some, <laughs> sometimes like February to January, you know, just, just however long they want to run it. <laughs> but this could either be a reason to visit the parks during these times or a reason to avoid the parks during these times. But regardless, you need to be aware of what's going on. The next question is, can you use your room key to make purchases throughout the resort? Ugh, this is a little bit of a tricky one. So in theory, the answer <laughs> is yes, but in practice, it is more difficult. So on the days that you check in and check out, you're probably gonna have some issues trying to charge things to yeah. your room. Uh, so on check-in days, it does take some time for them to get everything processed and get that set up in their system. Even if you tell them, yes, I wanna charge right. to my card, sometimes, things don't line up. Yeah, and then on the day that you check out, like once you tell them you're checking out and you get your portfolio, they absolutely won't let you yeah. charge anything after that. Also, sometimes Universal does have issues with their system where you go to run your room key and it just won't accept it. So in theory, all of the different like resorts and you know, at the hotels and CityWalk, they should all take your room key, but you wanna make sure that you have some sort of backup form of payment with you as well. The next question is one that we get probably more frequently than any other question, and it's how do you get the annual pass holder rate when you're booking your hotel rooms? So if you weren't aware, if you do have an annual pass, you can get up to a 30% discount on Universal's on-site yeah. hotels. And there are two different ways to go about this. You can call Universal and speak with the team member to see if those yeah. discounts are available, but you can also book this online. And the easiest way to find the website is to Google UOAP hotel rates, mm -hmm. and it should be that very first link that pops up. And then you can scroll through you know put in your dates like normal and see what rates pop up then if there is a pass holder date available when you click on like whatever hotel you want to see there'll be a little bar at the bottom that says annual pass holder rate as opposed to like the savvy traveler or whatever so you know that it is actually that discount that you're getting so something that we get asked that's sort of like sub questions to that question is people ask for tips on how to acquire mm -hmm. these because they're not always available and right. that's because they're subject to availability you're not guaranteed the pass holder rate and i think that's something that a lot of people misinterpret they think i'm going to get 30 percent off of hotels but that's just not the case with universal like growing in popularity it's probably becoming a little harder to get these rates currently um that's sort of what we're seeing and what we're hearing so you're just gonna have to be quick on it something that we always suggest is if you are dead set on going a certain time go ahead and book as early as possible and then if those rates do pop up you can just call back or rebook 
the room mm -hmm. at that discounted rate and it won't cost you anything extra. Yeah, and another thing that I wanted to mention is that those rates do become available between 30 and yeah. 90 days prior to your travel. So they absolutely will not be available earlier than that. So like Teller said, book early and then in that time frame, check back like every day. While we're on the topic of annual passes, the next question is, how many days do you need to visit the parks for an annual pass to be worth it? <laughs> so the answer to this question is extremely situationally dependent. Yeah. If you want like a broad spectrum answer, we usually tell people if you're visiting for at least three days, you should start to consider an annual pass. The biggest issue with that is block out dates. Yeah. So the two cheapest passes, which are the seasonal pass and the power pass do have block out dates, which are like July, around Christmas, spring break, and they things like that. And so if you're visiting during those blockout dates, it's possible that a multi-day ticket is going to be your best bet. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is promotional deals that Universal runs. For example, they just ended their like buy three day, get two free deal, which for five days in the parks was an incredible price. Yeah. So if you're trying to get like the very bottom dollar, that's probably the best way to do it. And then if you have more than one trip planned in a 12 month period, even if you're visiting for like two days or something like that, both trips, and a seasonal pass is probably going to make the most sense. But our biggest recommendation is just to price check everything. Yep. So just pull everything up on the website, see what the tickets are gonna cost, and then go with whatever's cheapest. Question nine is, can you experience a ride queue without getting on the attraction? Yes and no, and, and I'll clarify. So we get the question a lot that like, is there a line that you can just walk through to see the queue and not get on the attraction? And no, there isn't. They don't have anything like that in place. Mm -hmm. But yes, like you can just walk through the queue and not ride. Um, so one way that they do it most of the time is there's child swap on almost every attraction. And so once you get up to the front line, you can just be like, I don't want to ride. And they'll just send you through child swap. Mm -hmm. And so that's a pretty simple process. Also, another way that's not guaranteed, and we haven't even done it on a lot of the attractions, is you can do like a backstage tour mm -hmm. where they'll take you through the queue, show you some interesting things on a lot of the rides. Um, so if it's like a slow time in the park and the team members aren't necessarily that busy, that is another option. Just don't depend on that one. And although they do call it child swap, it really should be called rider swap. Yeah. We also get the question a lot where there's a situation where like, I want to ride a specific attraction, but Tyler doesn't, but I want Tyler to wait in line with me so I'm not by myself. And you Selfish. can absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> you can absolutely do that. And again, when you get up to the front of the line, it's gonna work the same way yeah. where you're like, hey, somebody in my party isn't gonna ride this attraction. And then they'll wait for you in the child swap room. And then, so if I rode the attraction when I was getting off, I would just make my way to the child swap room and then we could exit together. Question 10, can you visit any of the on-site hotels to eat or swim at regardless of where you're staying? So that's actually like two questions <laughs> and the answer for each of them is, different so the restaurants so eating on site yes like it doesn't matter where you're staying it doesn't matter if you're even staying on site or off site or at that specific hotel they'll let you eat there it, it, it turns out that a restaurant will let you come in and pay to be fed because that's their business model um the other side of that like so pull hopping that's what that question is referring to and the answer is like no with an asterisk so the answer is a hard no if you're staying at the Endless Summer Resort, so Dockside or Surfside Inn, uh, you don't have the ability to pull hop. However, if you're staying at any of the other on-site hotels that Universal Orlando offers, you can hop or go to any of the other pools on property and that is completely fine. We did want to sort of note with that question is we get asked a lot about like, how do you pull hop? Like, mm -hmm. so you've got a couple options and neither one of them are great. So <laughs> you can walk to the other resorts. The problem is some of these resorts are pretty far away from each other. And then you can either like take the bus or the water taxi if the hotel that you're staying at has the water taxi. Mm -hmm. But it's like, there's not a direct route between hotels. So it would kind of be like a marathon that you have to do. So you can take the bus to City Walk get off that bus and get on another bus that's going to a different hotel if you wanted. And you could do the same for the water taxi. So, I mean, 
you're allowed to pull hop, it's just not necessarily easy. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know, why are M&Ms liars? They say they melt in your mouth and not your hand, but they definitely <laughs> melt in your hand. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up. You can hit that but subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching Chocolate Everywhere. <laughs>